So in this video, we are going to fix all of the issues that I pointed out in the previous video uh, with the navigation, with the navigation component library. So just to kind of reiterate, I'm going to log in and I'm going to show you those issues. So number one is the nav drawer doesn't work. The hamburger up here does not do anything. That is problem number one. Uh, problem number two is the back navigation. I can't open the drawer for some reason. There we go. So if I go to this fragment, I go to that fragment, I go to this fragment. Uh, now if I press the back button, all of those things are added to the back stack. That should not happen. So that's, uh, that's problem number two. And problem number three is this back arrow doesn't work. So we have kind of three main problems that I need to fix in this video. But in general, it can kind of be categorized into two problems, really. The first problem is the, the, the hamburger, that not working. And the second problem is the back navigation. The back navigation isn't working in general. So uh, that's what I'm gonna fix in this video. All right, so the first problem is the, uh, the hamburger. So I'm gonna go into main activity and I'm going to actually insert a new method. So I'm pressing control O and I'm going to insert, uh, oh, what was it called? It's called on support, support navigation up, on support navigation up. Yeah, so inside of on support navigation up, uh, we can pass a parameter and it's gonna change the way the back navigation works. And that's what's called navigating up, it's navigating back. So I'm gonna come into here and I'm going to return navigation, U, whoops, navigation UI uh, dot navigate up. I wanna reference the navigation controller. So navigation, navigation dot find navigation controller. This reference the ID of the navigation controller and then pass drawer layout. So what I'm doing is I'm telling it uh, when you wanna navigate up, reference the navigation controller and the drawer layout and then do whatever it works with those things. And this actually does a couple of things. It does more than one thing when I insert this method and call this. It actually enables the back arrows. So, so let me uh, let me run this and, uh, and I'll show you. So if I run the app and I log in, nav drawer, the nav, so, so notice the, nav, the hamburger works now. So if I click this, the hamburger will open, but it doesn't close. So that's one thing that this method does. Uh, next, let's click on posts and watch what happens when I click the back arrow. Now the back arrow works. So it does two things. It enables you to open the nav drawer, but not close the nav drawer. Um, and then it also enables the back arrow. So that kind of solves some of our problems. Uh, I wanted to kind of showcase that because I think it's kind of weird the way that works and like, why doesn't it close the drawer? I think, I think that's like a, that's a default behavior that you'd want, but whatever, it's fine. Uh, we, we can work with that, we can work with that. So now to, to close the nav drawer, we're going to use the, uh, we're gonna use the on options item selected method. And what I can do is I can add another switch case here. I'm gonna add android.r.id.home. And uh, what that does is, is the android r id home ID references the back arrow in the toolbar. So no matter what activity you're in, what fragment you're in, whatever, uh, no matter what, that ID will always reference this this button right here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm checking uh, for that particular button click. And then if that's clicked, I want to first of all check if the drawer is open. So I'm going to go drawer layout dot is drawer open gravity combat dot start. So if that drawer is open, then I just want to close the drawer. So drawer layout dot close drawer and reference gravity compat dot start. And that will uh, solve our problem. I want to also return true here to consume that click. Uh, and then otherwise, if, uh, if that doesn't happen, I want to return false. So if, if the drawer is open, close the drawer and consume the click. If the drawer is not open, return false, meaning do not consume the click because we still want to uh, have the navigation drawer functioning basically. So we want to make sure that we do not consume that click if the drawer isn't open. So let's, uh, let's run that and take a look and see, see what we're dealing with now. All right, so I'm logging in, clicking the hamburger, that's fine, clicking it again, and it closes, cool. Now if I go to post fragment, that works. If I click the back arrow, that works. So that all appears to be good. Uh, so the, now the next problem all has to do with the back navigation. So if I go to posts, I open the drawer, I go to profile, I go to post again. Now if I click the back arrow, all of those things are added to the back stack, which is not good. We don't want that. 
basically what we want to happen is if they go to posts, that will get added to the back stack. That's fine. But if they go to the profile, the back stack should be cleared because that's kind of like a reset. That's like, that's like visiting home. Like you're visiting the home location of the app. And if you visit the home location of the app, the back stack should be cleared. At least how that's how I think. Um, of course, this will depend on what kind of uh, functionality implementation you want in your applications. But in general, I think that that's a good rule of thumb. You have kind of a home location. If you ever visit that home location, the back stack is cleared. But uh, again, that's up to you. So that's, that's how I'm going to be uh, doing this. So there's a couple of ways you can solve this problem. Uh, with the navigation components library, you can actually define uh, the back stack stuff um, in XML. So if you go down to this section here, pop up to and pop up to inclusive, Navigate, navigation in the back stack, that's this section of the, the uh, documentation. You can actually define the back stack logic in XML if you want with these actions, but I'm just going to do it programmatically because we have a pretty simple implementation and I just want to keep things simple. Again, like I said, this course is not on the navigation components library, it's on Dagger. So I'm trying to just get keep this as simple as possible. So if you want more information on that, check out the documentation. So the first part of this, as I outlined a few minutes ago, is I want to clear the back stack if the user navigates to the profile screen. So what I can do is I can create a nav options object, nav options equals new nav options dot builder. Uh, if I didn't specify it, by the way, I just, I know I just talked about um, that you can define the back navigation in XML, but you can also do it programmatically, which is what I'm doing. I'm not sure if I actually specifically said that. So anyway, uh, there you go. So I can uh, write, I want to create a nav options dot builder. I want to do set pop up to r.id.main so that references my navigation graph. Set that to true for inclusive and then do dot build. And then I can set these options to the navigation when I actually execute the navigation. So I can uh, add some extra properties here. So I'm going to add a comma. I'm going to pass null and then I'm going to pass nav options. So there's the nav options that I just created. So what that's going to do is that's going to clear the back stack whenever I navigate to the uh, navigation screen. Now, of course, the, the posts fragment is a little different. Number one is I don't want to clear the back stack, but then there's a new issue that kind of arises if you don't clear the back stack. So I'll show you what I mean. If I log in and I was to go to posts fragment, what happens if I continue going to post fragment? If I keep clicking that, then if I have it the way it is right now, it's just gonna keep stacking that fragment in the back stack over and over and over again. We, we don't want that either. So what we want or what we can do is we can create a check that uh, will prevent that fragment from being added to the back stack if it's already in view. So I'm gonna create a, a, a private method named, uh, should I create, yeah, private's fine. Private Boolean is valid destination, integer destination where this destination uh, integer is going to be the ID of the fragment that it's trying to navigate to. And then I can compare those IDs. And if it's the one that it's currently on, then don't do the transaction. So if destination does not equal navigation dot find nav controller, this r to ID dot nav host fragment, get current destination, get ID. If that doesn't equal the current ID, then I can do the transaction. So if uh, is valid destination r.id.post screen, then I can do this transaction. Because that's, uh, that's the only thing we're worried about is if the user is currently viewing this fragment and they keep you know trying to go to it, we don't want to allow that to happen because it's just going to keep getting added to the back stack. So that should, uh, that should handle all of our issues. Let's run this and take a look and make sure that everything is working correctly. All right, let's log in with a user. That looks good. Let's go to, well, first I can test this. Oh, that's good, cool. Uh, now let's go to posts. That looks fine. Click in the back arrow, that looks fine. Now let's go to posts a whole bunch of times. I'm just gonna click it a bunch of times. Now I'm gonna click the back arrow. We're taken back to the profile. That's great. So now the last thing I wanna check is just to make sure that the back stack is reset when I go to the profile. So if I click on the profile, now I expect when I click the back button again, the app will close, which it does. So everything is working as we expect. It appears the navigation is working correctly. And uh, you've got a kind of a 
introduction to the navigation components library. Hopefully I've piqued your interest and uh, made you want to read more about this because I think it's really cool the way that they've done this. It's all very clear and organized, a much better way than doing the old dirty old fragment transaction way, in my opinion anyway. And um, you know, I've, I've only scratched the surface. So I encourage you to take a look and leave comments in this video, in this course, if you want to see like a mini course on the navigation components library, because I'd probably be up to doing something like that. So definitely uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, leave a like too, just because, you know, I earned it. Don't, don't forget to leave a like. So now uh, we're almost, we're nearing the end of the course. I just have a couple of things that I want to do. Uh, and, and that's working on custom scopes. So I wanted to make sure that I finished all the navigation, all the components, all that kind of thing before I worked on the scoping. So now in the next video, I'm going to start working with custom scopes, you know, talking about them, when you should use them, why you should use them, how to use them, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video. I uh, just wanted to kind of interject here. This is breaking the regular course flow for this course in this video. I just wanted to kind of quickly interject and ask you a favor. So for those of you who don't know, I make my living from making courses. I make online content and I have a membership on my website where I have premium courses available to my members. And uh, since I stopped making courses for Pluralsight, that's pretty much, much exclusively how I make my living. So that's how I literally pay my rent and I buy food and I keep existing. Um, so I wanted to just kind of take a second and ask you if you get any value from my courses, to please go to my website, konugmich.com, and leave a testimonial. So just go to more, go to testimonials. Uh, if you if you want to leave a testimonial, all you got to do is create an account. It's free. It takes literally 30 seconds to do. And click on write a testimonial right here. And uh, this will pop up. You can leave a comment here saying, you know, like, Mitch helped me get a job or whatever. Uh, leave a rating. My mic is falling down. Um, leave a rating and submit that. And that, uh, that would really help me. It helps me to everybody who writes a testimonial uh, is, is another piece of proof that my stuff works and my videos work and you get jobs and you get better at being a developer. You build the app that you always wanted to build. All of these things. So if, uh, you know, if you get any value from my courses, from my, from my videos, I would appreciate a testimonial. Thanks. Let's get back to the course.